Hi, Warhawk Defense here. Today is the 4th of July and um, we thought we would bring out a gun that uh, had a little patriotism involved with it. Uh, it's, a, it's a rifle actually, carbine. It's uh, one that we have not reviewed before. This was, uh, it's been in the back of the gun uh, cabinet for a long time, but this is an original World War II uh, M1 carbine. Um, you can see it a little better maybe. Now, this one uh, is from uh, General Motors uh, Corporation Inland Arms of the General Motors Corporation and you can't see it on here but um, it was actually the the barrel says it was manufactured in August of 1944 and um, everything on it is World War II authentic. Uh, somebody had it before me and polished up the stock a little bit but I've added some things uh, to it. This is an original World War II sling and oiler that goes in here. Uh, reproduction 1943 uh, ammo pouch but um, this is the real deal. Now this one has been modified after World War II. They took a lot of these uh, in and they modified them. They put this bayonet lug on here and um, they reissued them for uh, Korea and uh, Vietnam. A lot of them served in Vietnam and Korea and they went out to all kinds of other people. It was like six million of these guns made and distributed all over the place. Now six million is a lot and, and the way they were able to do that they had all the parts very tightly specced and they made them all over the place. All different companies made them and uh, of course General Motors Inland Division made most of this one but some of the other parts and pieces could have been from anywhere. Um, you know they even had um, you know all kinds of companies to uh, make them everywhere. So that's how they're able to make so many but this is an authentic one. We haven't shot it much. We're going to shoot it today uh, and see if we can range it. Uh, I'm thinking the barrel's not in very good shape and I'm really kind of thinking about uh, putting a new barrel on it. Um, and if I do that, uh, before I do that, I want to see if this barrel really is any good. This one has the flip sight. When I bought this gun, uh, it someone had mounted an actual scope on it. I think they were using it for a varmint gun or something, shoot coyotes or something. Uh, I took that off, uh, got a reproduction flip sight put on there. I really probably should put um, an adjustable sight on it and make it a little more um, authentic for the remanufacturer that they brought it back in, re-arsenaled it, put this bayonet lug and things on to bring it up to uh, Korean War 1950 standards. But pretty cool gun. Uh, one of the reasons I like these is because I I've got a picture of my dad who uh, was in, in uh, the Army and in World War II and through Korea. And here's a picture of him in Japan on occupation duty, probably 20 years old or something, uh, you know, standing guard duty with one of these rifles. He was, looks like he is a kid, he was a kid, and uh, he since passed away. But, um, you know, pretty cool. He's standing guard duty with one of these. And the funny thing is, this is a magazine fed. Uh, the, the magazines are usually 15 round. Um, here's a 15 round mag. It just slides in. Uh, they also make 30 round mags for it. But he's standing guard duty in Japan with without a uh, without a magazine in the gun. But it was after the war. I'm sure that it was just uh, for looks. But anyway, kind of cool. It's got safety right here. Um, standard bolt. Um, this one's got a snap cap in. I'm going to take that right now. Uh, these these rounds are kind of interesting. It's a it's a cross, and I'll come right up close. Hope you can see this. This is actually the snap cap. Um, but if you look at it, it really looks like a revolver cartridge. It's 110 grain. It's 30 caliber, and it was a transitional round. Uh, let's take out a real one out of the mag. Uh, it was a transitional round between uh, the 45 auto pistol 
in an M1 Garand rifle, and it was uh, the idea was that officers and rear echelon troops, uh, military police, transportation guys, uh, uh, officers again, headquarters people would carry this gun. Here's the round. Hopefully, it'll focus on it. You can see it kind of. It's just a straight walled cartridge. These are full metal jacket rounds, and this would be like the military round was. But um, it was a transition round between uh, the 45 pistol and the M1. Sometimes I guess they figured the pistol wasn't quite enough sometimes, um, at, but the M1 Grand was nine pounds something. It was a little too heavy to pack around if you were a truck driver or an officer that had to uh, carry uh, you know, a bunch of paperwork, maps, and all kinds of other things. So, Also, the paratroopers um, had these because they were lightweight. And when you're jumping out of an airplane with 100 pounds of gear, you know, if you can lighten uh, anything you can, it's good. And it's short, uh, which is also nice. And um, So anyway, a nice gun. And this one is authentic, World War II, 1944. So we're going to shoot it. We're going to take the camera around, and um, I'm going to, uh, we're going to shoot it over the hood of the truck and down on the targets down there, see how we do, see how it sights in. So. Hopefully that'll work. So we'll uh, move the camera and set up for the shooting. Here's a close up look. You can see that bayonet lug on there. The flip sight. There's that flip sight right there. Really, probably it flips up for long range and short range. Range on this gun was probably 100 yards, 150 yards, so it's probably set for 100 yards and maybe 200 yards uh, when you flip the side up. There's the pouch, two 15 round mags will fit in there. There's the oiler you can see in there, it's got oil in it and a little dipstick that you can dip it out. Uh, maybe that's what I need to do. It's pretty hot today. Um, the gun hasn't been shot in a long time. Um, I've really only shot it a couple of times since I've had it. And um, so probably needs a little work. And these rounds are Mexican 30 caliber rounds, so, you know. Um, okay, we're ready. We're gonna, we've got the magazine in. We're gonna rack it round in. She's loaded, ready to go. We'll put some rounds down range. See where they go. Well, there's the first three. I was aiming down dead center, uh, center of mass down there, but uh, looks like they're going to the right. They're drifting to the right, but uh, you know, up and down. The elevation is probably about right. I was probably trying to put them you know, right in here somewhere, and they're going right up in here, which isn't all that bad. Considering it's a rifle, it was made to shoot a, you know, about a hundred yards, and we're nowhere near that, so it's a little high. I'll just have to hold a little lower and put it in the center. But it definitely needs to have that sight scooched over a little okay. bit. Okay, I tapped, tapped the sights over just a little bit to the left. Uh, see if that takes some out, and I'll hold a little lower. We're out about. Uh, I counted coming back. We're about 35 yards or so uh, from the target. Uh, you know, that's for a rifle, that's pretty close. Um, so we'd expect it to be not quite as accurate. We should go maybe all the way back to 100 yards or so and try it. But uh, my range here, I don't really have that much distance. This is mostly a pistol range and a 22 range. so. Uh, for this, we'll just try and shoot it from here, and I'll just have to hold. So I'll hold a little lower, and uh, we've moved the sight to the left. So we'll see how this goes. Here we go.
All right, let's go down and try that. See where they were. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh yeah, look at that in the A zone. A zone hits two of them right there together, side by side. One just slightly above it. Okay, we'll shoot off hand this time. No shells clear over on the truck. All right, let's go down and take a look. Oh, very nice, very sweet. Oh, look at that. A hits, C hits. I had one flyer. Yeah, look at that. Threw one off out there. One was a flyer, but other than that, the rest of them are pretty good. You know, for a World War II vintage gun that is uh, a lot older than I am, been shot by probably a lot of guys, and who knows, probably went through World War II, Korea, maybe for sure. Um, my guess is this gun probably went through Korea, at least it got set up for Korea. And uh, then sometime in the 60s, I think the uh, government uh, sold or, or allowed the NRA to sell a ton of these for like 15, 20 bucks a piece. And this one might have gone out the door that way uh, and then been modified for uh, somebody to shoot coyotes or something with. But, you know, it's on a small caliber, 30 caliber. Uh, doesn't have a gigantic punch, but it's got enough. And it's certainly more accurate at distance than a pistol is. Look, there's a couple of those are in the same hole. And they're all grouped together there pretty well. And a lot of those are standing. That one was a standing shot. I scared that dude. But the rest of them would have been good solid hits. So, you know, for a combat gun, I, I would have taken one of these into battle. Weighs a whole lot less than nine pound M1 Garand, that's for sure. And you can carry a whole lot more ammo. Besides, so nice personal defense weapon, um, accurate as you are, even with this 1944 August of 44 barrel, uh, I'm impressed. I think I picked up a pretty nice gun for 250 bucks. Try and find one of these for for that right now. But uh, anyway, right there. Of course, I guess I'm bragging about that a little bit, but they're pretty sweet. In fact, I'm gonna go do a close up. I'll set the gun down here, and we'll do a close-up. There they are! Look at that! All right. Yep. Oh. Look at that. One, two, three. Three nice holes, standing 16 yards. Boom, boom, boom. Nice gun. Works great. Glad I got it. If I was going into battle in World War II. Out of taking one with me, no problem at all. Okay, this time I will sign off, uh, and um, I'll think about if I'm going to edit all the bragging out or not. Um, I have to see how I feel when I put this together. But you know what? I might just leave it in there. Anyway, see you later.